Info Cafe. Pour yourself a warm cup of your favorite and let's chat about our love of animals. I'm your host, Jennifer Eileen, and I am so delighted to present our topic today, Do-It-Yourself Winter Cat Shelters. Let's hear from our guest, Tom Bovey, Executive Director of Loudoun Community Cat Coalition. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. I'm so excited to talk about cat shelters, how to build your own. First, I'd like to talk about Loudoun Community Cat Coalition and your interaction and mission with free roaming outdoor community cats. So uh, thanks. Our mission uh, is to humanely reduce the outdoor cat population. And we do it through two primary programs, our trap, neuter, return program, where we trap, vaccinate, spay or neuter, and then return the cats to their homes where they typically have caregivers taking care of them, providing food, water, shelter. And then our second program is our kitten rescue team. When we find kittens who are born outdoors, uh, 12 weeks or under, they're still tiny. We bring them in, socialize them, and get them adopted as indoor pets. And the combination of those programs is intended to head off the, the, the continued breeding and reproductive cycle of cats living outdoors. And, and so you, how many have you rescued over the, this year and all the years you've been doing this? This year uh, is actually one of our record years. We're going to be really close to doing 600 cats that we've trapped and returned. Uh, about 100 kittens a year typically is what we rescue from, uh, from the outdoors and get them adopted as pets. And we were founded in 2015. Since then, we're, we're getting close to 4,000, a little close to 4,200 cats that we've TNR'd so far, and probably 600 kittens that we've rescued from the outdoors. That's, that's such a great statistic, so thank you for that. So turning to the topic of outdoor cats and winter and shelter, um, let's just talk about the life of an outdoor cat and why they need shelter. Yeah, it's very challenging. Um, typically, kittens are born outdoors. About 60% don't live past six months. They, they, there's all kinds of risks and, and uh, there's predators, the cars, lots of things. So, so it's a really hard life from the get-go, from the start. The nutrition for cats who have to fend for themselves outdoors, who aren't fortunate enough to have people that they're not living nearby in a neighborhood where they're getting food put out for them. They tend to be underweight. They're, you know, they're obviously trying to do what they can to survive, but it's very difficult on the mothers, the breeding mothers who have kittens and are nursing those kittens. It takes a real toll. So, um, you know, eight to ten year lifespan for a community cat is really long, unless you have a caregiver. And then we've had we've seen cats that have lived fifteen to twenty years with a healthy diet, with food, water, and shelter. And a lot of people do. Um, feed them even though they may not acknowledge it. Uh, you see community cats in neighborhoods that roam from house to house because, you know, like a buffet line because different people are feeding them. They're typically unowned cats, so uh, they may have one or more caregivers because you don't really know where they live and they'll roam an area to do whatever they can. They're very resourceful. So if there are two or three food bowls outside, they'll make sure they're cleaning up the two or three food bowls. Fresh water and shelter is really important, especially in the winter months. Um, the cats, I mean, you, if you can imagine, the cats are just living outdoors, trying to find warm places. So a lot of times you'll see them get closer to homes, um, under sheds, under decks. And if there's a vent, um, you know, dryer vent or something that's blowing, they'll get close to those just for warmth. And they're looking for places to get out of the elements. It's really bad, especially wind and, uh, you know, freezing rain, things like that are just, it's miserable for cats, just like it would be for humans living out there. What I've seen in my own travels and colony caretaking are cats in storm drains, using storm drains as a protective habitat. Yeah, those are the, the uh, pretty smart ones because it helps them. One, they can stay out of the weather, you know, if they get away from the openings. And the, in neighborhoods, they use them as a travel as a travel route. So they don't, they, I mean, they're aware that their automobiles going by, it's a risk. And so if they go under the streets, then they, they kind of stay away from the dangers. But when you have, um, a lot of rain or flash flooding, things like that. There's also risks in them living in the storm drains. So mm -hmm. a lot of folks provide shelters like these so that they can they can have a place to live, get out of the weather, and be relatively close to where their food and water source is. So what's the right time of year to put out a, a winter cat shelter? Uh, if you're going to be doing it in the winter, we typically like to get them out in the month of October. It's a, it's a good time to put them out because it, the cats aren't going to run right to it. They don't know it's for them. So they have to kind of learn that. And if it's there, they'll investigate it. Cats are curious. So if they see one of these shelters that's in an area where they normally hang out anyway, 
they'll tend to check it out. Uh, eventually, when it gets cold, they may go in it. And then once they're in it, you see them using it over and over and over. And they'll use it all year long. So people, you, oh. we don't recommend that you take the shelter away and then put it back out again. You do, there is some maintenance that has to be done on it every year. And I, I'll show you that in a little bit uh, with the demo. Um, just to make sure that the insulation is fresh, that if there was any water infiltration or something, that you can fix that or replace the shelter. But when cats see them there and they get used to them there, if you take it away and put it back, and now it's like a new, you have to go through that reintroduction cycle again. Ah. So leaving them there year round, but making sure they're ready in October for as the weather gets colder, the cats get used to it, especially if it's the first time you're putting it out. It may take them a few weeks to actually start using the shelter, but then they're very happy. They'll, they'll be in it all year long. Okay, and will more than one cat use the same shelter? It depends on the on the cats. So <laughs> when we talk about you know feral free roaming cats, community cats that are just onesie twosie or they're on their own, um, they tend not to be very socializing groups. They'll hang around. There, there's always like any, any animals living outdoors, there's safety in numbers because you have more sets of eyes looking for threats. But when you have a colony uh, of cats and caregivers who are taking care of them and 10 to 12 or so, or whatever number there, there are that hang out together, they tend to sleep together to share the body warmth. So you will find larger bins like these ones where two or three cats can get in them. Uh, if you only have one cat, then you can get away with a smaller shelter, but they quite often you'll see them nestling together just to share the body heat. Well, I know you sent me one picture of a possum who had taken over, <laughs> but it, is there a, a risk or how do you prevent other wildlife for, from finding it, making it home? <laughs> well, you really, <laughs> you really can't. <laughs> so, but if there are cats in the area um, and the cats in the shelter, it's wildlife really, they don't want to get into fights with other wildlife. So if it's occupied, they won't go in it. Once the cats are using it and their scent is in it, generally wildlife won't you, know, you won't find possums or raccoons in it. Okay. That particular picture was actually the shelter sitting next to you and the, the roof comes off of it. So you can work on the inside and get insulation. In. Interesting. And uh, I went to re replace some straw in there, lifted the lid off, and here's a possum just <laughs> looking at that. <laughs> but, uh, then when they're in there, I've, I've seen them in there and a the cat goes in and the possum will leave. Other times the cat will see the possum and just back off. But generally wildlife don't, they don't, stay in these shelters for very long. It was just passing through, checking it out. <laughs> sure. And possums are, have such a positive impact on our environment. They eat ticks. Yeah. They're friendly. They're not aggressive. Yeah. But um, they don't necessarily want to live with a cat. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Cats are very social Great. and they're very uh, protective of their, their areas. So Great. once they're in using the shelter, you typically don't get much wildlife infiltrated. Great. Well, that's a good context, and so we want to take a look at a video that you made, and we'll, then we'll talk more about um, the, the how-to and the elements. So next, we will watch a video of how to build an outdoor winter cat shelter. Hey, y'all. It's Tom with Loudoun Community Cat Coalition, and we're doing some shelter building today. And we've got a new product we're using for insulation that was just donated to us. And now that we're trying it out, I'm kind of excited about it. I think it's, uh, it's really nice. And so let me show you what we're doing here. We have our kit here, which is a large, a large Rubbermaid bin, which will be our outside bin. And it is the 30 inch bins, roughly 29 inches. And then there's a smaller bin that's gonna sit inside of it. The smaller bins are the 23 inch wide bins. They probably have gallon desk measurements, but I don't know what they are. And so these sheets in here are the insulation um, that we're using. Rips, and I pack them in here on either side, above and below. And then I'll show you the one that I just built. And then you can see the gap in between here, between the two bins. I'm just putting black duct tape so it holds all the insulation in. And then I duct tape the lid all the way around so that it doesn't, it doesn't pop off and stay shut. And then the inside, inside hole of this one, the whole inside will be filled with straw for bedding. So that's going to go inside of the smaller bin here. And we got our bale of straw right here. This insulation I think is going to work out really well. It's very clean. It's easy to fit it in there. You cut it with a pair of scissors, uh, sharp scissors, or you can use a carpet knife or something, but I'm using scissors. It doesn't make a big mess like trying to pack straw between these two shelters. And then I can save the straw and just fill it on the inside hole when I get to the site where we're gonna put the shelters out for the cats. Welcome back. 
we will continue our demonstration of how to build your winter cat shelter. Tom, what's all this good stuff? <laughs> so as you saw in the video, um, the shelters that I was making there have a bin inside of a bin. And they're really good because you can insulate very well outside the bin. The smaller bin, as I mentioned, this is, these are, this is the living quarters for the cat. And it will be completely filled with straw. Um, so the, the tools that you need to make it, I didn't go through all this in the video, are pretty simple. A pair of scissors, a magic marker, some duct tape. I like the black duct tape because it's plastic on the outside and it's water resistant. And a paper plate to use as a template to cut the hole in the, in the shelters where the cat's going to go in and out. And then I like a Dremel tool. Um, you can use a utility knife or something else, but the plastic is sometimes difficult to cut. A little Dremel tool really does it. It really does a good job cutting the circle out. Okay. So could I, I even I could do that? Yes, it's <laughs> pretty easy. Um, the, you can get really crazy and take hours to build these, or you know you can do them in about an hour. I knocked two of them out in about an hour and a half. Uh, with the insulation. And you said the Girl Scouts were making these. Girl Scouts did in Herndon. We have a group of Girl Scouts that made several shelters. And there may be some photographs I sent you of the, the red bins um, that yeah. they built with yeah. the Girl Scout troop on it. So uh -huh. it's really not that difficult to do with a little bit of guidance. And a whole kit might run you about $30 for the cost of the bins, uh, a bale of straw, some insulating material, a tape and things. It's about what they cost to build one of these. Um, so I'll just do real quick some of the things I didn't show in the video. And there was a little pop-up in the video where the, the shelter I had there had the holes cut in the middle of the side. And that's because I already had the inner, the inner ones were already cut that way. And on that particular bin, it had a really, it didn't have a smooth side like this. It was, you couldn't really cut the sides. But if you want to cut the hole in the side, like on these ones, do the inner one first. Just put the plate on it, on it draw your marker around it cut the hole out and then it just gets placed inside the larger shelter like so and then as you line it up what I do is if there's a hole already inside you can trace the inside uh, the hole you've cut on this one and that'll mark it on the inside of the big bin and then you cut the hole on the side of the big bin so the other thing you need to do now if you're going to build one of these types is to insulate all the way around it put insulation between the two and I, I use this uh, fiber fill, fiber fill insulation, which I'm going to try to find a source for this. Right now, we get this donated from a bakery, a bake shop, and they, they get this stuff packed. It's the same stuff that's inside your coats. It's very warm, and it just lays in around the sides. It's pretty easy to install. So we're going to take this out. Yeah, we'll take that one out. You lay this stuff in. Pop the bin back in the center. And you got multiple pieces of this, as I showed in the, in the video demonstration. You can just tuck it down. And it makes a really nice, warm area for the cat. Other things you can do, people take the thinner styrofoam coolers and they'll tuck styrofoam down around yeah, the outside. I've done that. That kind of makes a mess, but it, it works. Um, don't use anything like fiberglass. Nothing that you wouldn't that, you, that will cause irritation if you breathe it. Mm. Um, so you don't want to use something like that. but. People have done spray foam inside. Um, hmm. I find this stuff really easy to use because it's clean. You can cut it with scissors and pack it in there. Mm -hmm. um, and once we find a source for this, find the company that's actually shipping these to the bake shops. We'll post that on our website for people to find. Great. So that's kind of this style shelter. I'll show you another shelter here, um, which is similar, but a little different. And this one, this has been used for almost, for more than 10 years. That's amazing. Um, so they really last well if you get good quality bins. Yeah. Check them every year to make sure there's no cracks or water leakage because then you're defeating the purpose of the bin. And this one will uh, kind of use to show you that there is some maintenance you need to do every year so that they last and they work. This was used at a site where there were about 20 cats and they all knew each other and they slept together. So rather than putting a bin inside the bin, this was left just as a single bin um, to give more space. And we use the Mylar insulation in this one, the original person who built it. But you can see after a season outside, it starts to fall apart. The stuff peels off. So this can all be refreshed with the same kind of Mylar bubble wrap that's available, you know, all over the place in hardware stores. Or you could use um, uh, styrofoam tape to the sides. But this needs to come out. You wash it out. And this whole thing will be filled with straw. And you, you don't want to just put a thin layer of straw on the bottom, like a mat. You really want to uh, pile it up, 
The cats will burrow into it, they'll mash it down, they'll surround themselves with it, and it really helps keep them warm. So there are usually three to four cats who would share this bin at the site where we had it. Um, well, we let, had let's it. talk for a minute about straw. Not hay, not your grandma's comforter. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about why straw. Straw is uh, very low moisture. It, it stays dry. Uh, hay, is, hay will break down. Hay is made for eating. It's not made for bedding. So it will break down, it will mat, it will mold, it will cause respiratory issues with the cats because they're in there breathing that mold. Likewise, you don't want towels or blankets, even though they may seem like they're warm uh, in the inner, in the inner uh, area where the cat's gonna be. If it gets wet or the cat tracks in snow or something, that's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna get wet, moldy, and it's not gonna provide the insulation for the cat that it's supposed to. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is you want these to be off the ground. So put a couple of bricks or boards underneath. You only need like an inch to an inch and a half clearance off the ground so it's not sitting in a puddle of water and so that there's some air circulating under it so it doesn't, you don't get that cold from the ground coming up through the bottom of the shelter. And then the last thing when you place these um, with the open hole in the front, some people make them where they put a canopy over this and there's all kinds of, you'll see all kinds of things if you look <laughs> online for feral cat shelters that people dress them up with front porches and things but what we do with shelters like this is we'll put a cinder block or a bunch of bricks on top so it doesn't blow away. Mm. And then we'll take a, a board, I forgot to bring a board, but this will serve the purpose, and just kind of lean it over the front like this so it covers the hole, mm. so you don't have wind blowing directly in or rain blowing directly in, and then lay a rock against the, the piece of plywood or something. Okay. Uh, other times people will put a board, if you have two of these mm -hmm. facing each other, you can put a piece of plywood covering both holes and weight it down, mm -hmm. and that way it just, it just it helps to keep the rain from blowing in the, into the, the entrance hole. Mm -hmm. uh, I've seen people put tubes on there, but cats really don't like to crawl through tubes that much to get in and out, so we recommend something that just blocks the, blocks the wind from blowing, blowing directly in. Those are very good pointers. Um, well, so let's talk about, this is good demonstration. Did you want to talk about this shelter as yeah, well? Yeah, I can share that one very quickly. Um, Should we? Just walk over here. Yeah. Is that we're going to be able to put it on the table? So this is a villa style, and depending on where you're going to put the shelters, you want to be, there's different looks. So typically, if people are going to be looking at it in their neighborhood or in their backyard, these tend to be what they go with because they look nicer. They, the lids pop right off of these. So you can take it off and it's either insulated inside the insulation. These have two layers. Um, the cats actually enter on the bottom through the hole and they sleep in the upper compartment. It has insulation. We also fill it with straw. Always fill it with straw so they have lots of bedding and they can keep themselves warm. And these, uh, these you can also buy kits for. Online they run about a hundred dollars. If you just do a search for the feral cat villas you'll see those. And uh, they're just nicer to look at. So typically, these, these bin styles are hidden in the woods or in wooded areas or in the back of a barn. And if you're going to have something you're looking at, there are other options that are more aesthetically pleasing. <laughs> <laughs> the cats love them all as long as there's straw in them and it's dry and safe. Yeah. Well, let's again talk about placement and about property rights. So, for example, you were asked to do this on someone's farm, but you wouldn't just put it on someone's property without getting permission. Correct. Um, right. So you definitely don't, you want to make sure that wherever you're taking care of cats, that you have permission to feed there. Uh, the cats are going to live there whether you're there or not. But before you put a structure out, you want to make sure it's allowed. If you're in a neighborhood, we've had... Um, issues where people have put them out in public grounds that are owned by the HOA without permission. We can help and there's other advocacy groups that can help work with your HOA and we've had we've had all those issues resolved where the, when the cats are there and people know they're being taken care of, they're vaccinated, they're not reproducing, they kind of are okay with something that's decent looking or out of the way or hidden to try to help those cats so stay disease free and, and healthy. So. And, and so uh, just in terms of placement, you know, for example, I lived in a neighborhood where there was just sort of this unfinished portion right in the middle of it. And it was kind of really woody and weedy, but that's where the cats tend to hang out. Right. So would that be a good place for a cat shelter? 
Uh, you want it if the cats are there, then that's where you want to put the shelter okay. near where they already are, because they t they typically won't you know leave an area where they feel safe just because there's a shelter there. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're living there, they've already found some degree of shelter. It may not be sufficient. The, you know, there may be kittens who aren't surviving because they're you know hiding in a log or something. So mm -hmm. putting a shelter where they are would definitely help. We recommend the, these darker color ones, particularly if you're trying to be discreet. You don't want to draw attention to where the cats are living, or you get kids and other people that want to that are curious about the cats, and that will scare the cats and stress mm -hmm. them. So uh, more, the more camouflage they can be when you're hiding them in the woods, the better. Um, in the photos that I sent you, there were bright red bins because um, they went on sale after Christmas. <laughs> so people donated these bright red and green bins. The greens we could use everywhere. There's bright red bins. We really didn't, couldn't put them in the woods. They'd stand out like a sore thumb. But all those, all those were placed in people's barns, so it was their own property. They didn't care that they were bright red. They just were happy that cats had a warm place to stay. So we, we make use of all of them. Some people wrap them in trash bags or they'll paint them black or do camouflage paint. But all that really helps um, just not to draw attention to where the cats are living. All right, I was gonna ask you that because you can tell me if I made a big mistake, but I did paint a bin in camouflage. It's fine. It's okay, <laughs> all right. The cats will find it. And okay. That's what you want. <laughs> all right, that sounds good. That sounds great. Well, um, kind of to, to, to wrap and, and um, the, the supplies can be, are obviously available in so many different places. And um, for our audience, we will be providing that list on PetInfoCafe.com. It's a pretty long list, so you'll, you'll be able to follow it that way. And Tom, any closing thoughts about Loudoun Community Cat Coalition and um, just what, pe what can people do to help cats that are living outdoors? in addition to building a shelter. <laughs> yeah, the first thing is to make sure that they are spayed or neutered and vaccinated because otherwise they will just continue to reproduce. And one, one female cat can have up to 100 kittens, you know, in the course of its life. And each of those, if you assume half of those are females, each of those can have 100 kittens and they can start having kittens when they're five months old. So it comes very quickly, two to three litters a year, and, you know, four or five cats can turn into 30 in a heartbeat if you're not on top of it. So if you'd see a cat that's living outdoors, it doesn't have the tip of its left ear clipped off because that's what we do. So you can visually tell that a cat's been spayed or neutered and has a caregiver. It has two pointy ears or you see kittens living outdoors, contact us or contact a TNR group, a trap neuter return group in mm -hmm. the area and get those cats spayed, neutered, and vaccinated first. That's the first thing you gotta do is stop the breeding cycle. And then you can focus on proper nutrition, food, water, and shelter and give them a nice place to live for the rest of their life without reproducing out of control. <laughs> yeah, that's that's very good advice. How many shelters um, have you have you built, Tom? I personally have built probably 100. Um, that, we, <laughs> that, you know, when you think about all the, since, you know, 4,000 plus cats since we started doing this in 2015, um, it's really not a whole lot of shelters. A lot of caregivers build their own or they have really nice tack rooms or barns or things where the cats you know, where they're heated, which is, you know, a great life for a cat, but most mm -hmm. of them aren't in that situation. Um, I've helped caregivers build them. We've done workshops where people have come in and mm -hmm. we teach them how to build shelters so that they can continue to sustain that, that uh, for the cats. But there's a lot. There's uh, other groups that also do shelter building workshops. And one thing I wanted to mention, I didn't forget about these. A lot of people use styrofoam coolers, the real thick, mm. heavy ones. Yeah. They work really well for about a year and then they start to disintegrate. So we used to use those because they were easy, they were free, people get food delivered to them and they donate them. We've actually stopped taking donations for styrofoam shelters because they make such a mess and people tend to put them out and leave them out and the cats will use them and after a year or two, those shelters start to absorb water. They just break down in the environment and the last thing you want is the cat to think it's gonna go into a warm, safe place and freeze to death because it's insufficient. And if they're using it year after year, you know, they don't know that the thing is going to leak when it leaks. So we don't use those. And the, the maintenance is really important. Every spring, check your shelters, make sure, take out the old straw, refresh it, make sure the insulation is good, and then check it again in the fall right before winter. Because yeah. as I mentioned, cats, we use them all year long. Yeah. And you really want to make sure that they're, they're watertight and the insulation, the straw inside isn't moldy or dirty or dusty. And, there, and if wildlife has gotten in there, you want to clean that out and give it up. But styrofoam doesn't 
Uh, it's not biodegradable. Right. So that's a factor too. Yeah, it's messy. Right. But you know, if that's all you have, it's better than nothing. And the yeah. cat, if it keeps the cat warm, it's a good thing. Just make sure you don't leave it out in the environment. It's good. Mm -hmm. They've got to come in and be refreshed. Well, Tom, this has been so educational and inspirational. And thank you, Loudoun Community Cat Coalition, for all you do. For more information about do-it-yourself winter cat shelters, you may visit my website, petinfocafe.com. Thank you. Their true nature is as a companion animal. So they'd like to be around people. They may not want to interact with people the way that your pet cat does in your living room because they're, they live with that. You know, they know the challenges and they're fearful. Um, but they tend to hang around because where people are, there is food, there is shelter, there is warmth, and there are people with big hearts who will help, who will help them survive. They are really scrounging and hunting and doing everything they can to get by. And the, the three elements of life are you know, food, water, and shelter. And without any one of those three, it's a very difficult life. I'm Tom with Loudoun Community Cat Coalition. Our mission is to help the cats are, are born outdoors. We, get the, we do TNR, trap, neuter, return. We get them spayed, neutered, and vaccinated so they don't continue to reproduce outdoors. And any kittens we find while we're trapping the, uh, the parents, we get bring the kittens in and we socialize them and get them adopted as indoor pets. Those are our two major programs, the Kitten Rescue Team and our Trap Neuter Return Program.